Hello, fourth grade. I still miss you all so much. I hope you're reading and staying safe. Uh, make sure you're reading every day. Uh, where we left off in Escape from Mr. Lemon Tello's library, uh, they were all playing the game and um, they were spinning the spinner and just trying to get all of the clues. Um, and then they still had some, I know Charles and them were looking at their, the things they have and the ones that they need. So let's start off with chapter 32. And it looks like they're still just playing the game all together with Kyle's team. All right, let's go. Okay, Sierra, said Kyle, your turn. Sierra flicked the spinner. The pointy tip ended up in the yellow 200 zone. So she went ahead and pulled a yellow card. It's definitely for the 200 sections, she said, showing her clue to Miguel before re revealing it to Kyle and Akimi. Weird, said Miguel. What, said Akimi before Kyle could. Well, the 200s are where they keep books on world religions. But there are two numbers on this card, said Sierra. Maybe this time we need to find two books, suggested Kyle. I don't know, said Sierra, setting her card. 220.5203 is obviously a call number. Obviously, said Akimi. But the other number isn't in the proper format. 22015. February 20th, 2015, said Akimi. Quick, what happened on that date? Um, nobody knows, said Kyle, because it hasn't happened yet. Oh, right. Okay, how about February 20th, 1915? That was the opening day of the Panama Pacific International Exposition in San Francisco, said Sierra. Jaws dropped. Sorry, I'm a big World Fair fan. Everyone else just nodded. Finally, Miguel spoke up. Look, let's just go down to the 200s room and find 220.5203. We can figure out the second chunk later. A team once again troops down to the second floor and work their way around the circular balcony. You guys, said Sierra, looking across the atrium at the statues. Remember how they switched all the hologram authors when Bridget Wage did her extreme challenge? Yep, said Kyle. She was doing good till she got to the Russian dude. What Russian dude? asked Miguel, who hadn't witnessed Bridget's elimination. Guy who wrote five or six books Sierra could tell you about. But look, said Sierra, now all the author's statues are the same ones they were last night. So, said Kyle thoughtfully, if they can switch them around, these must be clues for our game, blurted Akimi. She pulled out her pen and notepad. I'll write down their names. Start with the guy under the triple zeros wedge of the Wonder Dome, suggested Kyle. Right. Akimi read the labeled pedestals and jotted down the author's, author's names. Thomas Wolfe, Booker T. Washington, Stephen Sondheim, George Orwell, Lewis Carroll, Dr. Seuss, Maya Angelou, Shel Silverstein, Pseudemus Bosch, and Todd Strasser. So, said Akimi, when she finished writing, do you think this game could get any more complicated? Maybe, said Kyle. It's possible that Mr. Lemoncello left a couple different paths the same solution. Well, personally, I can only take one path at a time, said Akimi. So let's go find 20, 220 point whatever. Should be in the next row of bookcases, said Miguel. Here we go. 220.5203. The King's James Bible. Och, Jeeber! An excellent choice, said a man with a thick German accent. The four teammates spun around and were face to face with a semi-transparent guy in a medieval garb with a fur trimmed cap and a beard that looked like two raccoon tails sewn together under his nose and chin. I'm Johannes Gulbenflag, Verlanden zum Gutenberg, said the holographic image who had ink stains all over his fingertips. You created the Gutenberg Bibles on your printing press, gushed Sierra. Ja, 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 big seller. You need help with the Bible. I'm at your service, he bowed. That's the best German accent I can do, you guys. <laughs> okay, said Akimi, turning to Miguel. Take it away, Miguel. 
Er, Gutenberg, sir, we're looking for two twenty fifteen. Dust ist im Fach. Huh? That is easy. Two twenty fifteen is Exodus chapter twenty, verse fifteen. Of course, said Miguel. Exodus is the second book of the Bible. Twenty and fifteen are the chapter and verse. He flipped through some pages. Here we go. Exodus chapter twenty, verse fifteen. It's one of the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not steal. All right, chapter 33. Looks like we're with Charles. Let's put the two new cards on the table, said Charles. He and his so-called teammates, Andrew and Haley. Charles planned on dumping them right before he made his glorious solo exit from the library had scoured the library together for hours looking for more book cover matches. Peckelman wasn't nearly as good with the Dewey Decimal System as he had claimed to be. And Charles needed someone to do that sort of thing for him. His fathers always hired tutors or research assistants for him whenever Charles had to do a major report or paper. Finally, around, around six in, coincidentally, the 600th room, they scored twice finding T for you and me, 641.3372, and why wait to lose weight, 613.2522. Now their picture puzzle had only four blanks remaining. This is what it looks like now, guys. They only have to find four more. Uh-oh. Okay, said Andrew, I think it's pretty clear. Wooly blank walk up the skinny blank blank house Indian and 19 blank. Charles nodded and said, interesting, even though he knew Peckelman was way off. Uh, hello, said Haley. That doesn't make any sense. Sure it does, said Andrew. Uh, no, it doesn't. In his head, Charles had decoded the clues so far as you... E W E, a female sheep, blank, walk out T plus H plus E, because there's the teapot. T plus H plus E is the <clears throat> way, because she's weighing herself on a scale, but way like W A Y, blank, blank, in, past, past, blank. But out loud, he said, I think we need to tweak Andrew's translation a little. So that means Charles is figuring out in his head that he's not sharing with the other two. Fine, go ahead. I don't care. Andrew slumped down in his seat to sulk. How about she blank walks out the skinny blank blank house 500 past blank? Could be possible. <clears throat> Where'd you get she, asked Haley, from sheep, the card you gave us. Actually, I think this sheep is supposed to represent you because you, E-W-E, -E, is a female sheep. Fascinating, said Charles. I didn't figure that out. What he did figure out that Haley Daly was much smarter than he had assumed. She could be a serious threat. And no way was Charles sharing this prize with anybody, especially her. And how'd you get 500 from Indiana, she asked. Simple. Indianapolis, the capital of Indiana, is home to a race known as the Indy 500. Okay, so how about you blank walk out the skinny blank blank in, because Nancy Drew book was about an in, 500 pass or pass blank. Now, Peckelman typed up. That makes more sense than what you said, Charles. Indeed, said Charles, sounding magnanimous. Perhaps the clues are telling us to locate a secret skinny passageway 500 paces past some landmark here in the library. Andrew was excited. This is like the pirate map from Treasure Island. Or, said Haley, maybe these clues are telling us we need to go out and find the four books we haven't found yet. <clears throat> we should split up. I'll go back to the 400s room. We've already been there, said Andrew. Well, you guys might have missed something. Good idea, said Charles. 
He figured if Haley Daly wasted time retracing the steps that Andrew had already taken, she would find nothing new and become less of a threat. Let's meet back here at, say, seven. Fine. Haley left the meeting room. Charles went to the door and closed it. You know what we really need, he said to, to Andrew. Chocolate milk and maybe some cookies? Charles shook his head. No, Andrew. We need whatever clues Kylie, Kyle Keeley and his team have found, especially if they have our missing cards. All right, one more chapter, guys. 34. We're going to do three chapters today. Fury left. The instant she reached the second floor, Haley made her way around the 400s room. She figured that Charles and Andrew had probably missed something important in the foreign languages room because they spent too much time talking to these awesome mannequins that told them all about their American heritage. As she rounded the bend, Haley saw Kyle Keeley and his crew tumble out of the 200s room. It looked like Miguel was carrying a Bible, but a Bible wasn't one of the books on display in the staff picks case. We're following separate paths to the same goal, Haley thought, and somewhere those two paths are going to collide. Haley slid her card down the reader slot on the 400s room. The lock clicked and she pushed the door open. The room was dimly lit. Bienvenida! Mutami, welcome, boomed a voice from the ceiling speakers. Sorry, said Haley, blindly feeling her way toward forward and bumping into something hard and lumpy. This is the 400s room, home of foreign languages. Here, Haley, you can learn all about your American heritage. A bank of spotlights thumped on. Haley was basically hugging a department store mannequin. An overhead projector beamed a movie onto the dummy to her left, turning it into a perky woman who looked like Haley would probably look a couple of years after she graduated from college. Hello, Haley. Welcome to your American heritage. Let's begin your voyage. That's okay. I don't have time right now. I'm Haley Daly. My ancestors were Irish, okay? So can we skip the history lesson and... Suddenly, two mannequins at the far end of the row turned into sepia-toned versions of her great-great-great-grandmother and great-great-great-grandfather. Haley knew it was them because her dad had a bunch of old photos hanging in their family room. The two dummies looked exactly like Patrick and Una Daly did at their wedding portrait. No man ever wore a scarf as warm as his daughter's arm around his neck, said Patrick in his thick Irish brogue. Your dad is proud of you, Haley. Thanks, but I really need to win this competition. Watch out for sneaky rascals, said Ona. Them that would steal the sugar out of your punch. Haley had to smile. It sounded like her ancestor had met Charles Chillington. And always remember, Haley, said her great-great-grandfather, every woman's mind is her kingdom. Rule it wisely, lassie. I'm trying. This library can help, said her great-great-grandmother with a wink. And when she did, a secret panel in the wall slid open. What's going on, said Haley. You're our third visitor, boomed the jolly announcer in the ceiling. So, according to the American Heritage Dictionary of Idioms, available in our reference department, by the way, the third time is a charm. Therefore, as our third visitor, you have won this charming bonus. Two bonuses a day? She was right. Mr. Lemoncello definitely wanted Haley Daly to win this game because clearly he knew she'd be perfect, best-looking spokesmodel for his holiday commercials. Don't worry, sir, Haley said to the nearest TV camera. I won't let you down. She hurried through the open wall panel and into the 300s room on the other side. Ta-da! The first thing she saw was one of the books they'd been searching for. True Crime, Ohio, the Buckeye State Most Notorious, Brigands, Burglars, and Bandits by Claire Taylor Winters. She quickly opened up the cover and found the hidden 4x4 four four card. It took her two seconds to decipher the clue. Band plus its bandits. 
Haley remembered another bit of Irish wisdom, something her dad had said all the time. Never bolt your door with a boiled carrot. She decided to keep this new secret, new clue, secret and secure. She wouldn't share it with Charles or Andrew. Haley took off her left sneaker, folded the card in half, and slid the clue into her shoe for safekeeping. When her sneak was laced up and tight again, she took the True Crime Ohio book off its display and tucked it into the bookshelf, making sure it was in the proper position, right between 364.1091 and 364.1093. That way, she'd know where to find it. Um, if, for whatever reason, she needed the book again. Haley looked up to the nearest camera and flashed at her brightest toothpaste smile, toothpaste commercial smile. Go Lemoncello. That's a cheer I made up. If we can use it in one of the commercials after I win. And that's the end of the chapter, guys. I miss you all so much. I will see you next week for some more chapters. Remember to read every single day. And 